head coach of the Hendersonville Eagles, Kelly Church, assistant coach Chris Ruest. Guys, uh, how you doing today? Uh, doing great. Thanks for having us. You're doing well. Thank you very much. Looks like I have the wrong mic up for Coach Ruest. I apologize there. It's all right. So, but uh, get into, obviously, the other day when you guys were playing Bradford and Christian Academy, they honored both of you for your 25 years uh, coaching at Hedgesville and 400 career wins. Uh, we were unable to be there, so can you take us through, I guess, the ceremony and just your uh, reaction to that since I know it was a surprise for you guys? Well, uh, first of all, it was, you know, obviously, uh, you know, fairly emotional, <laughs> you know, thing because we didn't, neither one of us knew about it. So, uh, just right before the game, it was very brief, uh, but they they read a um, statement about you know our our time together uh, there at Hedgesville and um, you know and presented us with some really really nice crystal trophies or whatever. Um, you know, and the 400 win thing is like we don't like we were asked on the way in. Rob asked us like you know was that you know when did you get number 400? And 400 was last year sometime. Uh, neither one of us have been very big and uh you know i i talk openly when we ask people about it like you know if i asked you what was my record five years ago you guys could probably tell us we don't know and to be honest i tell people all the time no one really cares uh so while it's a it's a great accomplishment to to reach the 400 and to do it together the the thing that's more important is the you know the friendship and the relationships and you know, our big statement we talk about all the time is basketball becomes an excuse for the relationships. Um, so, you know, our friendship and, you know, 25 years is a long time for anything. Um, so, so to be recognized for that way more than the 400 wins, uh, you know, it meant a lot. Yeah, I guess uh, one of the things that stuck out to me is I've had a bunch of people that, uh, that have said, you know, hey, congratulations, didn't realize it's been 25 years. Uh, and so I guess in a good in in a way that's really really good because it doesn't seem like we've overstayed our welcome at this point so uh you know it's uh it's been a nice experience uh you know kelly and i are really good friends and and that makes it fun and and we enjoy doing it together um as well as the guys that are on our staff and all the guys that have been on our staff uh over the years i mean obviously in high school athletics you have staff over uh turnover you know quite often and and you know and so the fact that we've been able to do it together is it's pretty special and it's you know it's also a testament to to coach and and you know a testament to our players our administrators our program and and you know we've we've just enjoyed it and hopefully we'll continue to enjoy it since you mentioned just the friendship is really now what uh you guys love focusing on not just basketball through the 25 years you just talk to us uh, about the uh friendship that you guys have created where it started and uh, where it's at now well, we <clears throat> we met when I came here 25 years ago. Chris was already coaching soccer at the high school, and uh, Mr. Dillinger suggested that I meet him and and talk to him about helping out. And uh, you know, uh, I th thought it was great because he already he already you know was a coach of another sport, um, and uh, so you know, along the way, people. Like, I, I don't, I, I can't, I, I don't want to understate this, overstate it, you know, whatever the right term might be. Um, the, the way we do it is, is part of the reason that we have a, a turnover with assistant coaches. Uh, the reality of the time that, that, that I ask and expect uh, from our assistant coaches is, you know, I think it's unprecedented for high school basketball. Uh, we scout virtually every game that's played in our area. If we're not playing, uh, we have long meetings after four practices, uh, you know, and so there's a great deal of time because for us it's not just, I mean, the basketball is a big part of it, but there's so many other things that we really try to, to monitor in terms of academics, behavior, kids' family lives. Uh, and so because of that, uh, it's not, you know, uh, there's so many hours. Uh, and then the, the natural thing that's going to happen is you're either going to grow really, really close or, or you're going to kill each other. And along the way, there's been some, you know, we want to kill each other. I mean, that's the reality of it. But, uh, you know, you, you, we can't spend, you know, we were there for, for marriages, divorces, you know, kids' births. Uh, you know, uh, Adam and Alex, when the twins came with me, they were, they were two and a half, you know, so... Uh, 
obviously Chris became, you know, like an uncle, second dad, however you want to say it. And I think I've been the same way to his kids. And, uh, you know, just become, you know, everybody said, you know, bring it in together on three, family. Uh, for us, it really is family. Yeah, ironically, uh, you know, several years along the stint, we actually lived close to each other, and that was not by design. It just kind of worked out that way. And so, like, you know, his, like he said, his kids would spend the night at my house, and my kids would spend the night at his house. And, you know, I mean, you know, families have become really close, and that makes it special, and it makes it enjoyable. Like, you know, when you spend the amount of time that, that we do doing it, and, you know, we talk all the time, and coaches reference, like, it's not Duke, but it's our Duke. Uh, you know, and so we try to treat treat it like college basketball as best we can with high school kids. And so, you know, when you're spending that much time doing something, you better enjoy who the heck you're doing it with. Otherwise, you're going to be miserable. And, and, you know, that part has been nice. And, and I think it's obviously led to us continuing to do this at this at this point for for a very long time. So one thing that has always stood out to me about you guys is that. Um, while you obviously coach Hedgesville, it's very clear that you have good relationships with the players on the other teams, the coaches on the other teams, and you really rep- represent the area, I guess, in, in some ways. Can you talk, I guess, a little bit about what you try to do for the area in general with high school basketball? Well, along the way, uh, you know, life, life happens and you make, you know, life choices. I, uh, I started out, I coached in college very briefly, uh, and then uh, got married, had children, and then had children by myself. So uh, it changed when I was a younger person. I used to go camp to camp to camp and work uh, nine or ten camps every summer to try to make make and build as many relationships with people as I could. Uh, by doing that, that's helped me develop and continue to to uh, build strong relationships with lots of college coaches. Uh, when you have those relationships, it does help you. Like if I, you know, we joke around uh, the other day before our parent meeting uh, at the beginning of the season. Actually, you know, Coach Missoula was texting me as the meeting started. Uh, when the head coach of the Celtics is texting you, you text back. So uh, my son, when, when Coach Missoula was at Fairmont, uh, my son, who coached college basketball at UAB, went with Coach Missoula and tried to help him with stuff that he had learned, that Alex had learned when he was at Marshall with Coach D'Antoni. But having those relationships with other people, one, it helped me understand the importance of relationships, and, and two, Coach Wainwright, who I reference all the time, he really helped me understand that, I, you know, we all get caught up and we want to win or lose. Like, no one wants to lose. Everyone wants to win. But if this really is about the relationships, it, it can't be the relationships and, and, you know, at the sacrifice of a kid at another school who happens to be your rival. Uh, if people act right during games or when they, when they play against us, if kids are good kids and they're talented kids, and I certainly try to use my resources to the best of my ability to, to help all those kids. And when you, you know, Coach, when Chris talked earlier about, you know, we, we always talk about relationships. And, uh, you know, one, one of the things that we're really, really proud about that they mentioned in the speech was like, okay, 100% graduation rate. Well, what's that mean? Well, it means nobody's ever played varsity basketball at Hedgesville High School and not graduated with their class. That hasn't happened. So uh, that's a pretty big accomplishment in a 25-year period. Um, and there's, like, I'll be the first one to tell you that, that Kyle Van Meter and Alex Shanholzer are two of our assistants. Uh, and two of the other assistants, right? They, they're the ones that monitor it right now more than me. I mean, that's part of their job for me. Uh, and they do a great job. But uh, I know Brian Thomas has sat in this chair. I love Brian Thomas. Well, he's the coach at Musselman. He's also one of our former players. Matt Faircloth, one of our former players. Uh, you know, um, Luke Samples, who's the coach at Spring Mills. He was on our staff. Uh, George, George Gosk. George Gosk, yeah. Yeah, George Gosk at, at Spring Mills Girls Coach on our staff and so we we, you know try to understand that everybody wants to win but you can't say you're really in this for kids and then not be in it for kids and i think honestly that's the message that that lots of people lose um like i said rob asked me like when was when 400 i'm not really quite sure the only reason we're really sure that we're over 400 is because we have to fill out a form when we went to the junior orange bowl so you start adding up wins because you have to um you know so um, 
being able to influence not just that, but the number of people we've coached that have gone on to service academies, the number of people that we've coached that are uh, administrators within Berkeley County Schools. Uh, I'd, I'd like to think that, that both of us played a large role in teaching them life lessons, and you'll hear my talk about them in practice every day. We, we spend more, as much or more time talking about how everything relates to real life than, um, you know, than just than just the game of basketball. It's just about the game of basketball, man. It's uh, we spend way too much time doing it. Yeah, I think uh, I think you know, adding on to that, one of the things that that happens is like when you're around this area for so long, like you just get to know kids and you get to know people, uh, and you know. Everybody talks about, and a lot of times adults are, will talk about the rivalry of this game or the rivalry of that matchup or whatever it might be. But in the end, man, they're, they're 15, 16, 17-year-old kids that are just trying to do what the best they can to win a basketball game. And, and you know, sometimes we lose sight of that. Uh, and, and you don't ever want to do that because, you know, uh, the, the kids that, like Coach Branson at Musselman, his oldest son played for us. You know, I mean, it, those things, there's intermixing and intertwining things that relationships and, and, and things that, that happen in this county that, you know, that allow that stuff to happen. And so you're, you're constantly in a situation where you know somebody who somebody knows or, you know, vice versa. And, you know, Jess Sutherland, who just graduated from Martinsburg, his sister now plays at Hedgesville playing volleyball, uh, you know, and so... Uh, you know, all those things kind of intermingle and, and it becomes, you know, you, you get to know kids and, and obviously you want to help kids no matter what. That's why we get into it. You know, we certainly didn't get into it for the high pay scale that we have. So, you know, you get into it to help kids and, and that's certainly what we try to do. 25 years, what has been something that has changed that maybe you didn't expect or didn't want to change? And what is something that you're happy that has changed over the 25 years for the two of you you want to go first um well i think the game has changed uh over the 25 years i, I think you know you see it at every single level uh when we first started like you know nobody said ball screens now everybody sets ball screens uh and so adapting to the different styles of play that have that have come into uh or that basketball has kind of evolved to has been part of it and you know anybody that's been coaching for a long time has had to deal with those kinds of things uh and so that's the first thing that comes to mind in terms of that uh you know but you know i, I think no matter what, when you go through a long period, you got you got cycles that things go through, and, and you know, like I said, certainly I think the the style of play has cycled a little bit, even down to the high school level, and you know, now you got all the more calls for the shot clock, and you know, so my guess is it'll change even in West Virginia at some point in the future. So you'll have to keep adapting to those things. Um, that because of because of media social media and everything else i think that's that's obviously been a been a big influencer the number of people who are basketball experts who never played at a even semi high level to me is amazing uh, everybody's an expert everybody knows what every team should do one of the things that we do is a little different you know back in the day when i got here <laughs> You know, when, when Patrick Ashton, who's a, one of the directors in our county, when Patrick Ashton played at Hedgesville, was my second year here. Now, those practices were closed. They were pretty intense. Uh, our practices are still intense, but now they're, they're open to parents. We encourage them to come. Uh, we learned that from Buzz Williams, and one of the things we, we, we got from him was that, you know, uh, part of the reason we make those practices open is we, we, we'd like for parents to understand why sometimes Billy doesn't play. Because if Billy can't pay attention in practice and Billy doesn't understand our plays and, you know, or Billy doesn't try hard or Billy wants to talk to Joey on the sideline, then Billy doesn't deserve to play. And so you have so many outside people now. Um, I, I'm fairly certain. And again, I, there, there's a lot of good ones. But to, to be someone who now is uh, like I'm a, uh, I what they call him, I go, I go to my workout guy. Everybody's got a workout guy. Everybody's a, you know, I'm a, I'm a drill guy. I'm a, I, I don't even know what you call it anymore. Uh, so everybody has a person who's going to be their shooting coach, their ball handling coach, their, 
for the 2% of kids that are going to go play college basketball. To me, it's baffling. What happens is we tell our kids all the time, if if you're going to pay me a, a large amount of money on a regular basis to work you out, I'm not going to constantly tell you how bad you are because I want you to come back. Uh, so having all these outside influences over kids that in the end, I, I'm not sure what their real vested interest is sometimes. Um, that, and that's hard to deal with on our end because like we, we you know, I think statistically we could say we've had as many or more people go play Division One basketball than anybody around here, and it's not very many. Uh, but even the number of people that go play Division Two, II, Division Three, or go be managers, like we can help them if that's what they want to do. But but I just I, I refuse to lie to kids. I'm not going to tell them that. Hey, if like you know, uh, you can you can look uh, the Jenkins kid at at Jefferson. I watched him again last night very closely. Definitely is a Division One basketball player. My, you know, uh, the number of this is, a, you know, I, I use I reference it a lot and I don't mean it in a dis disparaging or negative way. I've been here 25 years. The number of Division One basketball players at Martinsburg High School, most athletic school year in and year out, unbelievable talent level year in and year out. Number of Division One players out of Martinsburg High School since I've been here two: Kevin Benz, Kevin Pitsnoggle and Dante Grantham. So two six nine kids who can really really shoot it, uh, you know. It, it just so I think what we need to focus on, and we continue to try to focus on, is teaching kids fundamentals, uh, teaching them the importance of of you know, being a good teammate and working hard, uh, and understanding that one day the game of basketball is going to go away. Uh, you're not going to be able to play it anymore. So when that goes away, have you learned how to be a good teammate? Have you learned how to be a hard worker? Have you learned how to be a good son, a good father, those things are pretty important. You two have been together for 25 years, uh, so obviously you know each other well. What is something that people don't know about Coach Church and something that people don't know about Coach Ruess? Well, I think the biggest thing that people don't know about Coach Church is they only see him on, you know, Friday nights on the sideline. Like, you know, they don't see him with – my kids or other kids or you know things like that like one of the things that happens when when you're in the heat of uh of a contest is you know it gets intense and and that intensity sometimes becomes emotional but you know that that's a that's a little clip in somebody's life and and you know we coach basketball it's not necessarily who we are as human beings it's what we do uh and you know i think one of the things that that happens all the time is you know well that guy he, you know sometimes he gets out of control no no he really doesn't he's just emotional and he's passionate about what he does and you know if you if you sat down and talked to him you'd realize he's not really like that as a human being uh, he's just like that as a coach on game day because it matters yeah, I, uh, uh, I don't like. I mean, I talk, Chris just talked about it in terms of myself, like the uh, people see that snippet, man, and they think that's like. But I, I, without hesitation, I'll never apologize for that snippet. I'm not going to apologize for my intensity when I coach. I'm not going to ever apologize for my passion or how much it matters. Uh, but if you've ever watched, as soon as the game's over, I mean, the second it's over, it's over. Uh, which is why I have the relationship that I think I do with kids at all the different schools. Uh, I appreciate how hard they play. Uh, this year, just to, <laughs> I got I got drilled at Jefferson. I mean, I got crushed. And uh, I genuinely wanted to make sure that, that the kid was okay, too. Uh, he clearly was way okay more than I was. Uh, but, like, you know, uh, I appreciate it. I, I, I told our team after we lost at Musselman that I genuinely, I genuinely was like, not happy for Musselman because I wanted to win. But I appreciated how hard they played. I appreciated the intensity. I appreciated the fact that every 50-50 ball they got and we didn't. And so while I was disappointed in me, my coaching, and our guys, I did have an appreciation for their kids and how hard they tried. Uh, in terms of Chris, I think the biggest thing is like, oh, well, well, 
Oh, uh, he must just, he must always agree with Kelly. He's always lumped in with me, good, bad, or indifferent. It's how it goes in basketball because I'm the head coach and he's the assistant coach. Uh, we don't always agree. We don't always get along perfect during games. Uh, and we tell our kids the same way. If you, you can't, like, you can't be upset if your teammate gets on you. I can't be upset if sometimes Chris looks at me and says, no, you're wrong, stop. Don't do that. Let's do this instead. And, uh, you know, I think it says a lot about both of us that uh, while I mean, there's, a, there's a difference between the seat to the left and the seat to the right, there is a difference. Uh, but, but both of us understand that we're, we're, we're both better with each other than we would be without. And I think that says a lot about our relationship.